Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, trash to treasures, thrifting adventures for farmhouse decor, and furniture flips with my husband, Chris. So in today's video, I am going to be taking my Thrifting Adventures haul and showing you how I transfer my or transform my small items to fit into my retail booth to fit into farmhouse decor. I always get a lot of comments that people want to see the before and afters. So this is kind of my shortened version of a little bit of how I go through, what I do for the metals, what I do for the wood, and then I'm just reconditioning and what I do for the wooden items that are going to be painted. So here's a video. Um, I don't talk through the entire thing because they kind of are self-explanatory. So this is what today's video is about. So of course the first thing I do is remove any tags and clean all the items that I'm going to be painting. And then I always undercoat with black and this is my flat rust-oleum with paint and primer. And then as you see I have them all laid out kind of space so I can try to get all the multiple sides and then I just try to do light coats and I end up doing multiple coats until they're covered. It's better with a spray paint or with any paint not to glob it on so you don't have a whole bunch of drips. And now after I feel like they're covered with the black I move on to my Rust-Oleum in my flat white and I do give those um, coats the same thing. I just give light coats and then it takes two, three, whatever it takes to um, cover them. It is nice to have them set up on a table with the, you know, the nicer weather. You can open the garage door to ventilate the, um, from the spray paint. And that way you're not inhaling it too much. And then you can move around. And I usually put a fan on when it's nice out. Um, so that helps them dry a little bit faster. And so I just move around and let it spray them as I can, and then just as many coats as it takes to cover them. So then after however many coats it took that for them to be covered, I go on to distress them. I just use some old sandpaper that I have laying around, usually a 220 that's been used. And then I just kind of let it hit the bumps of the items and let it naturally distress it. So here are the metal items. I'll just kind of let it play and not do a voiceover so they kind of speak for themselves.
So now we're going to move on to some of the little needy of the wooden items. So the cutting boards needed the knife marks sanded off of them so they had a nice smooth finish. Even though I was going to be painting the one cutting board and then linseed oiling the duck boards, I still needed to sand off so they were nice and smooth. And then I think somebody must have used this poor rolling pin as a hammer, so it needed to be smoothed off also. So um, now I'm on to using the Food Safe linseed oil to recondition the rolling pins and the duck cutting boards. I can tell you it's very satisfying when giving a dry wood a drink. It just pops those multicolor woods right off those boards. It's so beautiful. and what a transformation for these poor rolling pins. And then for this cutting board, I just added a couple pieces of wood to the bottom to make a riser out of it. So now it's on for the wooden items. And of course, I'm going to give them all a good cleaning with the crud cutter because you want to prep your wood very well. You want to make sure that your paint's going to stick. And this is a nice time to take a look at any of the pieces to see if there's any other needs that they need because there's always something that they need. So like these small little wooden candlesticks, when I was cleaning them, I noticed even though I couldn't see the wax on it, you could feel it when you were cleaning it. So it was just easy to just take my nail and just kind of make it come off. And so then this, this candlestick had a crack, which is no big deal to fill it in, but it's nice when you're cleaning them, you can take a look at that. And then it also it's a good time to assess what's going to need sprayed with shellac because you know it's going to bleed through your white paint. And now, now it's on to giving it its first coat of black undercoat. And I know even though I do this black, I still have to shellac it because it still bleeds all the way through. So now it's time to use my Kills Paint and Primer in flat white. And just like the spray paint, you want to put thin coats on and multiple coats so it covers. So then after I finish the white paint dried and I distressed them, here the pieces are, they're before and after.
So I thank you so much for watching today's video and I hope I have inspired you to, in any way when you're out thrifting or you have thrifted items sitting around at home how you can transform them into something new. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do. That helps me build my channel and yet lets YouTube know that you like my kind of content and I can keep this channel growing. I very much appreciate that. And if you have a friend, please share this video with them if you think they'd like this kind of content. And give me a thumbs up and a comment of maybe one of the items that was your favorite today.